Well, welcome back as we conclude this first week of devotionals uh, and continue in this time of Christmas tide. I've jumped ahead a little bit into the season of Epiphany because Epiphany often gets uh, short shrift. And uh, Christmas is such a, a huge holiday in the church. Uh, and then before you know it, we find ourselves in Lent. So in between is that season of Epiphany, and I wanted to kind of get a jump start on that. So uh, today I want to take you into the Gospel of John. Now, John does not have the stories that we're so familiar with when it comes to Jesus' growing up years. And uh, you would think that in John, there's not a lot of epiphany. Uh, there's not a revelation so much about who Jesus is uh, between the manger and when he becomes an adult. Uh, because in John, you have the first chapter, and in the first chapter, he talks about how uh, the Word of God uh, was in the beginning with God and was God. And then uh, by the time you get to the end of the first chapter, you have Jesus already beginning his earthly ministry and already calling his disciples. So John's gospel kind of skips over that part because maybe he thought, well, Luke's taking care of that. Matthew's got some of it, so I'm going to just go on. But, you know, that first part of the first chapter is just such a powerful part of Scripture. Uh, that I want to revisit that again as we conclude this week of scriptures. That's the one that starts with John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Again, that first verse there, in the beginning, you know, you can't help but think about Genesis chapter 1, where it talks about the very same thing, in the beginning, in the beginning. What we learn here in First John, or, uh, John chapter 1 is that Jesus was there with God in the beginning at creation. And it goes on to explain that. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. So Jesus was there at creation. Pretty amazing. Second person of the Trinity was present before we were here. That's why David says that he was here before I was. Even though David chronologically lived before Jesus. But in terms of eternity... Jesus was already here before King David. Blows your mind, right? But then you get down into the last verse of that section there. And it, it says this in verse 18. No one has ever seen God. Remember, Moses tried to see God. And God said, well, I'll look at you. I'll let you look at me, but you got to hide in the cleft of the rock. And you're going to see me from behind. Um, prophet Isaiah is in the temple when he's called to be a prophet. And... Uh, he says the hem of God's garment filled the temple. He doesn't get to see God, but he knows that the hem of his garment is filling up the temple. God is too big. And of course, we know in the scriptures, if anybody had ever seen God, they would have died. Why? Because God is holy. And his holiness is something that is beyond human comprehension. So you can't just go up to God. You can't just take a peek at God. You can't just shake hands with God, COVID or no COVID. It's God is holy and we're sinners. And, and holiness and sin cannot go together like that. Okay? So anyway, it says, No one has ever seen God. It is, God's, it is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. Here we're going to talk about epiphany. But now we're going to go deeper than just the epiphany of who baby in the manger is, who Jesus is. We're going to talk about how Jesus is the epiphany of who God is. That's fantastic. You realize such a gift that God gave us when he gave us his son? Because in Christ, we get to know God. That's pretty amazing. You know, there are a lot of religions out there that you have to work really hard at getting to know God. Um, you have to reach nirvana in some religions. In other religions, you have to pretty much torture yourself uh, to even get close to God. Um... There are so many other religions out there, not Christian ones, where you don't have God coming to reveal himself to you, but you have God telling people, you've got to reach me up here in order for me to reveal myself to you. And even then you're going to have a hard time. God says it doesn't have to be that hard. Isn't that fantastic? He says, just get to know my son because through my son you will get to know me. And it's wonderful in the Gospel of John because you have some of the prayers that Jesus prayed written out. And he's talking so intimately to his father. Just like they're right there together sitting at the table talking with each other about 
the disciples about Jesus and what he was going to do at the cross and the future for the church. You have give, been given insight uh, by God through the gospel writer John into that relationship that Jesus has with the Father. And so many times Jesus would say, if you know me, you know the Father. Remember? So we have that revelation of God through Jesus. And Jesus came in the flesh. So he became like one of us so that we could get to know the Father. Um, that's amazing. Uh, God loved us that much that he wanted us to know him that intimately that we could get to know Jesus, and in doing so, getting to know Jesus, we get to know who our God is. That's the best part. So um, that's why the Gospels are, are crucial, crucial reading and learning and studying for every Christian. If you want to know God, you've got to know Jesus. You've got to know Jesus. That's the best way to know who God is. Um, if you want to share with other people how they can get to know God, give them a gospel to read. Tell them to read the gospels. Talk to them about Jesus. That's how you're going to get to know who God is. You know, um, we don't often make that connection. Uh, and yet, uh, and as Christians, we often take them for granted, unfortunately. But the revelation of Jesus gives us the epiphany of God. So, it's very important for us as Christians to get to know Jesus. You know, there are a lot of reasons to get to know Jesus. We ought to know our Savior. Jesus says, uh, my sheep hear my voice. They know me. Uh, and they follow my voice because they know me. Do you know Jesus well enough that you would recognize his voice? Because I'll tell you what, on my deathbed, I want to hear his voice. I want to know his voice in the midst of all the other noise that might be going on. Because that's the voice that is going to take me home. So I need to get to know his voice now. I need to know who he is now. I need to know his words now so that I will recognize Jesus when that time comes. And then, of course, on this earth, you need to know Jesus even now because you need to know you're walking with Christ. You need to know you're walking with the right one, that you're um, in relationship with God's Son, uh, and that through him we get to know the Father, our Heavenly Father. And it's the Holy Spirit, you know, that helps uh, bring that relationship into being and sustains that relationship. So, um, very important here uh, that we have, once again, that beautiful passage from uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, and that last part that reminds us uh, that we nobody has seen God, but if you've gotten to know Jesus, you've gotten to know who our God is. Praise be to God. So, if the ultimate uh, epiphany is uh, to get to know who the baby in the manger was. Even on top of that, we get to know who our God is because we get to know who that baby is and, of course, what he would do for us. So let's pray about that. Lord, we get to see your heart. We are grateful that you wanted so much to reveal who you are to us that you would send your only son into this world uh, to take on human flesh, to speak, to live, to die, to be raised from the dead all that it took to show us who you are. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being willing to experience life here on earth, even among sinners. Thank you for being willing to share your own Son, who would go to the cross in our place so that we could live eternally with you. Thank you for paying that price, dear Jesus, that we did not have to suffer eternal death, and that you tasted death, even though you never should have had to. Lord, we owe everything that we are and everything we have to you. Help us to get to know you better, because in getting to know you, we get to know our Heavenly Father as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God bless you, and may you have a joyous uh, service tomorrow in worship, and it is already the second day of the new year. So God bless you in this 2021. May it be a happy, healthy, and a much more joyous year for each one of us. God bless.